What is going on guys? Quick video discussing HTTP smuggling. So this is an attack where someone, a hacker, can sneak in a request that they are not supposed to execute and make the server executed. Like access an admin page or maybe poison some cookies, uh, poison some cash cookies. How do you poison a cookies? Jeez, all right. Yeah, so you can poison a cash, so you can essentially serve some other content to legitimate users. And uh, I'm gonna just take a few minutes to describe how this attack works and then why is it bad and what is, how to prevent it. The first thing to discuss that, first of all, we need to understand how what is an http request right and uh, this is only applicable to http 1 1 doesn't exist in http 2 because we solve this problem with streams every request is a stream right with http 1 1 we don't know what is a request we don't have a, a boundary for the request oh this is where the request starts and this is where it ends it's all up in the air it's very ambiguous and I'm gonna talk about it, right? So the first part of the request is what? I'm making a GET request or a POST request. The first thing you send is what? The headers, right? And these are, if you, if you think it, this is a bunch of strings, right? Just a, just a bunch of bytes. So I don't know, content type, right? Or, or cookies is the header or, or other stuff, content length, right? So that's, the headers are, is not really a problem. We have well defined, and, and even Nginx and HA proxy have specific timer to read the headers because we know how to read the headers. They have a start and an end. Okay, the start is get a method, whatever, and then HTTP one one or HTTP two, whatever, and then the rest of the stuff is uh, basically the rest of the headers, just string colon, up until the end of the header is a new line. So we know where to stop. This is, we know the headers. The problem is the content, the body, the URL parameters, all that stuff. We don't know how to, what is the end. We cannot put it in new lines because the content might have, new, might have new lines, right? So we cannot do that. So what we did is we had a header, special header called content length, and that's the length of the content. We use that to determine that the length of the content. There are other methods I'm not gonna go like transfer uh, chunk encoding, but that's one way, the content length. Hey, the content is 20 bytes. Read 20 bytes in this big ass string, right? Because that's what the server is getting. Get, 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 it's all TCP packets, guys, right? It's, there is no say, oh, that's the end, then the start, it's just, stream of bytes that comes to the server and the server has to determine where to start and end, right? So that's that's the problem with HTTP 1.1. Okay, so content length. We know, it's like, oh, what's the problem with saying content length? Yeah, we have the header. Problem is like bad actors. They say, okay, I am as a bad hacker, I'm gonna do the following. I'm gonna see, send you the headers, but I'm gonna put two content length. One with five bytes and other with 30 bytes just to confuse the shit out of you <laughs> okay and here's here's the problem because we have this ambiguity now there is no standard says that HTTP said oh, okay content length read the first one or the content length read the second content length how do i know should i read the first one should i read the second one so serve it's it's basically the wild wild west no js does it differently pick the first one sha proxy picks the second one uh, nginx picks the i don't know uh, the the largest who cares right so there's the different implementation and here's where the bug and if you know this stuff god you can make so much money with bug bounties right so what happened here is you can do two content length and one with a short one and one with a long one and sneak in a completely different request. I don't know, get slash admin, which is completely internal, natted and cannot be accessed from the public internet and sneak it in as content, as just data, right? So, and this happens only in, in, a, in a proxy configuration. 
I should have mentioned that because there is a proxy. It has to be a layer 7 TLS terminating proxy. Doesn't happen with the layer 4 proxy, right? So if you have this layer 7 proxy that just terminates stuff, reads, interprets the request on its behalf. So, okay, here's where the request starts. So the request, the, the HA proxy or Nginx or Caddy or, 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 or traffic might interpret content length as the first content length. So it reads the short one. So iPhone decided to shut down because the temperature is too high and because California. So I'm going to make it short, guys. So what happened here is the proxy receives that malformed request, which has two content uh, length, one the short one, which has some of it, and then one has the long one, which has, which kind of takes another request, which goes to the admin, get admin, right? But what happens here is the proxy, Nginx, or any proxy here, right? If the proxy decide to take the content length that is longer, it will treat the whole request including that get request as just a whole one request so it will take that say okay here's one request Blah, take it i'm gonna it's gonna send it to the back end server no js right a caddy whatever but here's the thing the back end no js server will start getting 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 reading the headers first and says okay get content length what is it i do is gonna pick the first one right the shorter who knows that's when it happens if there's discrepancy between the two and they are sent on the same channel the same tcp connection connection pooling we talked about pooling this channel right <laughs> so in this case this don't just say okay well stop that's the first request it's gonna take the short one and it's gonna pick whatever the content that does like it would be a garbage request right but it also will start reading the, begin to start reading the second request, which is what? The git admin. Which is what? Which was supposed to be blocked by the proxy, right? You should never read that content. Admin is, is, is a private, it's a 127001 kind of a thing. You should never read it, but the Node.js says, oh, the proxy, I, the proxy sent me this. I trust the proxy. The proxy is king. Let me do this thing. I will do it for you, my friend. Okay, so the, the so now she's like, okay, let me still get admin. So we'll pull the admin page, whatever the credentials is, right? It doesn't have to be credential, just access to local resources and send it to the proxy. And the proxy says, yeah, oh, all right. It's I it's this sent some request to the head. This is this is this guy. All right, it's gonna start sending the hacker the content of the admin. I think what will happen here is the last win in kind of a deal, right? Or maybe we're going to get two, re two responses, right? This is the problem with T11, if pipelining and all this stuff, right? So yeah, just like that, the hacker managed to smuggle content in a form of just a normal HTTP request, right? And it happens when you have this discrepancy in, in determining where the request starts and where the request ends. And I talked about what is a request in this channel. It's a very philosophical question. Not really, but you, you get the point. So, HTTP2, I don't know whom to give the credit to, who invented the idea of having one TCP connection with channels in it, okay? SSH had this idea of channels. RabbitMQ with with the advanced message queue protocol have it. HTTP2 with Speedy or the Google have it. So now every request is tagged, right? With with content as the stream ID or the channel ID. So now we know that is, if you start receiving content on, there's a stream ID, like, and this is unique. Every request has a unique stream, right? So it's impossible to overlap requests, right? Because we know. As all this content belongs to stream one. So, all right, this is the request, right? So we get, you know what the request. So if you're using HTTP2 all the way, it better be all the way, then you don't have this HTTP smuggling attack, right? So, yeah, that's why it's very important for proxies to use not just HTTP2 at the front end, it should use HTTP2 at the back end. And guys, this is not advertised. People don't talk about this. Proxies don't brag about this because they don't brag about the missing features, right? They brag about the things they have, right? So 
Pay attention, learn. That's why I, I always keep blabbing about fundamentals. Learn this beautiful, basic thing. Forget about frameworks and stuff, right? Tools are just fluff. Learn the fundamentals. All right, guys, short video talking about HTTP smuggling. Uh, this this thing is a beast, guys, and, and people are just still uh, tasting it, right? So, yeah, gonna see you in the next one, guys. You guys stay awesome, fantastic. Goodbye. Love you.